Arsenio Hall has made a living out of interviewing celebrities and getting all of the juicy details about their lives. He lives a low-key life and is rarely the topic of discussion. Mm, until now. To see a man and a black man this emotional about the love of his son, I mean, I could start boohooing too. Before we get into other people's business, don't forget to grab something to eat at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of barbecue beef jerky, cinnamon toast crunch popcorn, and gummy sour bears. Arsenio was born on February 12, 1956, to Fred and Annie Hall. He told Newsweek that he was a sports fan for most of his life, and for years all he wanted was for his dad to sit down and watch a game with him. Unfortunately, his dad was a minister, and all of his time was dedicated to writing the perfect sermon. The Ohio native said, As much as I loved my dad and knew he loved me, I promised myself that if I had a child and if he were a boy, I'd always watch the games with him. He ventured out west in 1980 to pursue a career in the entertainment industry. He auditioned for voiceover roles, worked on his stand-up routine, and made appearances on several comedy programs. In 1981, while standing outside of the Los Angeles Improv Comedy Club, his friend Keenan Ivory Wayans introduced him to fellow comedian Eddie Murphy. According to the New York Times, on the night that they met, they talked until 4 in the morning. Arsenio told Time Magazine that Eddie's the brother he never had. He added, We share intimate secrets. We cry together. There's no competitiveness between us. Their bond led to Arsenio being cast in several of Eddie's projects. Eddie was known for being a bit wild, and he loved entertaining guests at his Bubble Hill home. Arsenio, on the other hand, wasn't really a fan of turning up. He told Vanity Fair that he was a bit older than Eddie, and he had already gone through his hard partying phase when he attended college. He filled in for Joan Rivers on her talk show before landing his own gig called The Arsenio Hall Show, which premiered in 1989. The monumental talk show gave black voices the opportunity to be heard on a national platform. Since there wasn't any social media at the time, the show became one of the only avenues for stars to break ground with their audience. Even politicians knew they had to appear on Arsenio's show if they wanted to appeal to young voters. Focus groups thought the show was too urban, while Spike Lee called Arsenio an Uncle Tom. But the ratings didn't lie. The Arsenio Hall Show was the hottest program on late-night television. And naturally, his competitors took notice and tried to jump on the wave. Kind of like when we started our Red Flag series, and now other channels are trying to copy us. Mm-hmm. Entertainment Weekly reported that fellow talk show host Jay Leno was inviting more black entertainers on his show, and Arsenio added that a person from Jay's camp even sent flowers to someone on Arsenio's staff to try to recruit them to work for Jay. Arsenio wasn't phased by it at all. Being surrounded by celebrities meant he was constantly meeting beautiful, eligible women. He started dating Paula Abdul, and in an interview, Arsenio said she was the best person to hang out with. Arsenio stated, I was madly in love with her. That's my girl to death, and I'm always here for her. Paula reportedly broke up with him and moved on with Full House actor John Stamos. Following news of their breakup, Arsenio had Madonna as a guest on his talk show. Are you jealous of John Stamos? <laughs> no, I want to know how it feels to be dumped for John Stamos. <laughs> Then she suggested that Arsenio and Eddie were secret lovers. Have you ever met Paula? Well, actually, I met her uh, on the MTV Awards, the ones yeah. that you hosted. And I noticed that <laughs> her tights weren't pulled up as high as they could have been. <laughs> what about um, Eddie Murphy? Uh, did I pull his tights down, too? <laughs> I heard that you did. <laughs> It turned out to be one of the highest rated episodes of his talk show. Arsenio was also linked to Brooke Shields, but he admitted to the Washington Post that he was married to his career. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, he mentioned that people always pressured him to get married, travel, go out, and have an exciting life. But none of that really appealed to him. He said, I don't want to go to the Bahamas. I don't care what Big Ben looks like up close. When I get tired of this, then I can do all that stuff. While being the host of the hottest talk show in town, he started to realize his private life wasn't exactly where he wanted it to be. He knew he should at least start thinking about settling down, preferably with a younger woman. 
However, he admitted that at that point in his life, he just didn't have the desire. He told Newsweek that at one point he went to the doctor and was told that he might not be able to conceive a child. Arsenio said, The idea of not becoming a dad saddened me big time. He started dating a woman named Cheryl Bonacci sometime in the late 80s. He made her the vice president of Arsenio Hall Communications. In 1994, after dwindling ratings and an interview with Louis Farrakhan that ruffled feathers, his talk show ended. With a little bit of extra time on his hands, he and Cheryl tried to conceive a child. In September 1999, they welcomed their son, Arsenio Jr. Arsenio was thrilled to do all the things with his son that he always wanted to do with his own dad. Sadly, his relationship with Cheryl ended when Arsenio Jr. was very young. Arsenio told Newsweek that Cheryl understood the strong bond he wanted to have with his child because of what he missed out on in his own childhood. Arsenio said, I was determined to be there for my son's first walk, talk, boo-boo, and whatever else. I didn't want to miss a thing. He knew that being a parent was going to be one of the toughest jobs of his life, so he decided to take a major step back from his career. He did a few projects here and there, but he also turned down a lot of big opportunities because he didn't want to leave his son for long periods of time. When he stopped answering the phone, Hollywood stopped calling. And then Cheryl accused him of not meeting his end of the child support agreement for their son, who was five at the time. Online sources state Arsenio wanted the agreement to be amended since his income wasn't what it used to be. Unfortunately, we are unable to find the results of the case. When The Apprentice premiered in 2004, Arsenio became a huge fan of the show. As his son got older, they would watch the program together. Execs of the program offered him a chance to compete on the show several times, but Arsenio always turned them down because he knew it would take him away from his son for two months. But one day his son turned to him and said, He said, Dad, we can win this before I left. Your son did? Yes, and, and it, it, could, it, it almost... Um, so he took his advice. Arsenio returned to the public eye and appeared on season 12 of the show and won the competition, raising over half a million dollars for charity. He finally felt like he was at a place where he could juggle being a dad and having a career, and he briefly revived his talk show in 2013. That same year, he was spotted at a Dodgers game with Paula. An insider told the National Enquirer Arsenio was still crazy about her, and they were both ready to pick up where they left off. As of this video, Arsenio appears to be single. Now that his son is grown and is a graduate of Indiana University, Arsenio has more time to perform stand-up and appear in movies and television shows. We might not ever see him hosting another talk show, but he has solidified his spot in TV history. He told The Guardian website, I see a lot of people, black and white, doing things that I started. I really do think that I kind of broke the mold a little bit and allowed people to do it their way. If you enjoyed this video, let us know down below. And thanks for watching RRG.